If you Dark Side of the Moon fans, forgive me for just one second, I take humor in how on the ball you are. <laughs> And this can also be connected as well to the other groups in attribution that uh, connect the Dark Side of the Moon as a supergroup, right? Because there happens to be a lot of points of cohesion among the audience that I'm thinking of currently in terms of the comment section. <laughs> it's just really funny to me. Like, the minute I posted the latest video covering their singles, that being the New Horizons uh, uh, feature song, some of the first comments that came in, and granted, to be fair, yes, I did kind of tease this, but some of you referenced immediately, you know, you when, when Ad Infinitum released their Chapter 3, you know, you covered that fully. I'm paraphrasing a bit, but are you going to do the same for Dark Side of the Moon? I said we'd be returning. I didn't tell you how extensively. It was my intention to come back to the entirety of the album. Like, and I don't always do that. Many of you know, I tend to be, uh, to operate with a diplomatic mindset. To be fair to all the artists, I have to accommodate, whether it be in first introduction specific works or as groups and artists. I try to judge everybody fairly, especially in the context of, it takes time to produce, you know, passion project work on this channel. That's very much what music consultations happen to be. But in some, in certain cases, Full-length coverage is warranted. And for Dark Side of the Moon, we've had a great time for six singles. Why not keep it up in terms of the routine? And I knew going in, you know, before I determined I wanted to do the full counter, there were specific tracks I was looking at. So I feel like, it, it, you know, to be fair to the other works that persist on this album and the experience we've had, even though, you know, with my content, seeing it's collaborative takes on a bit of a um, unorthodox appearance, right? And that's not necessarily of direct connection that we're sharing in the experience and participating mutually in first encounters of the Dark Side of the Moon's work, or really any band for that dynamic, but there is there is a social connection of sorts, right? Look largely in the comments section. I've had plenty of exchanges, with, uh, pleasant ones, of um, uh, you all in terms of back and forth to various artists I've consulted, and with Dark Side of the Moon, it's certainly not any different. But the, the experience of enjoying works together, especially on a first impression, I love that. I love the experience of it. Especially, in per perhaps, if anyone is approaching from the dynamic of being a first introduction of a Dark Side of the Moon's work. As I said, six exquisite singles were already released in anticipation. We're going to humor the last five now that Metamorphosis has released fully. But their work has been absolutely enjoyable to listen to. I loved humoring the experience of you. So I'm like, in the back of my mind, how can I not? Let's repeat Ad Infinitum Cycle and... <laughs> And maybe it'll persist on other groups as well. You know, they make up the entirety of Dark Side of the Moon, whether that be, you know, let's see with time, Foyer Schwongs and Amaranth. Certainly a selection. I've progressed now in terms of delivering coverage on all three of those entities. Um, they're all wonderfully gifted. And the Supergroup collaboration, I can't wait to see more of the evolution of it. I hope it is ongoing beyond just this album. This specific song, though, I will say when I consider earlier on, when I was meditating do I, er, on the prospect of returning. This is one I knew I wanted to entertain because of the we're returning to the not only cover territory but the collaborative one as well. And the collaboration works on this album have been wonderful, whether it be Charlotte Wessels or uh, Rusanda Panfili or Fabian Ernie on the last video. Her voice was great. Um, we're getting the same here with Thomas England. Some of you might know that name from this channel. Maybe you're not familiarized as much to his work, I believe, with Hang on, I'm going to reference the name here again. It's been a little while with him, Evergrey. But some of you might recognize the name if he was a first encounter, and you've considered the work I've delivered in the past on this channel in terms of, likewise, other collaborations. Remember Demon Hunter? Silence the World? Remember he was a uh, fellow vocalist there? And it was a great introduction. I thought Silence the World is, well, maybe you're not familiar with Demon Hunter as well. Maybe you're approaching this video from a lot of fresh dynamics, not just with Dark Side of the Moon. Demon Hunter is big in the Christian metal scene. They've been around for a number of years. I've been a fan of them for, well, they've been around for like two decades. I am a fan of for about 12 years of theirs. And I thought that Silence the World, it, one of their much uh, softer works, they tend to play around in terms of mix. They've got uh, more ballad-centric songs and then plenty in terms of the fresh, aggressive metal side. That's what they're known for. That's been a high point since their career emergence, quite frankly. I love Demon Hunter. I highly recommend them if you're not engaged. And they've got broad appeal, not just in the Christian scene, but they, they've got fans en masse, and they deserve it. Um, Exile, their album, offered a lot in character. And Silence the World was a very interesting track to listen to on part as well of Tom's much softer vocal style with a good range. Uh, he's got a good inflection. So let's return for a very interesting cover, at least in my mind, in terms of song picks. I, I'm, I think of past works 
and how the dark side of the moon has transformed said pieces while still being faithful in spirit, but take on a re- taking on a renewed approach. Misty Mountains, which I believe is the um, one of the songs off of The Hobbit. I love The Lord of the Rings. So <laughs> the connection point here, I'm like, okay, let's humor this. Um, speaking of, like, may it be, <laughs> let's return. <laughs> let's have two appearances. I, I cannot wait to hear the adaptation of um, presentation that Dark Side of the Moon might offer here. Or maybe it'll be an extremely faithful work with some subtle variation. Let's see. Either way, it's a re-entrance to Dark Side of the Moon as we peruse for the remainder of their work on the album and a return with Tom S. England. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the song, and as many of you know in terms of my coverage, and some of you might be operating from that dynamic as well in terms of freshness, maybe you're not exposed to my work. I do provide the lyrics for you on a routine basis, so if you want to read along with the narrative of the piece as envisioned originally by The Hobbit and now recaptured in the magic by The Dark Side of the Moon, I'm sure, the lyrics will be provided to you in the video, and you'll see those pop up in a minute as we commence with the song for ourselves together. I'm really excited to hear it. I mean, as far as I've said, but you know, with the introduction I've had of Dark Side of the Moon, it's been a wonderful experience to enjoy them in the company of you as well. And to humor their work again, I'm excited, personally. Let's enjoy this for ourselves. <laughs> this definitely feels like it has the tone of The Hobbit with a symphonic uh, metal flair. <laughs> okay. Reminds me a lot of Jenny of Old Stones in the variation, and to some extent may it be, even though this is considerably rougher on foundation. Do you know, it's funny to me how certain artists... Okay, that sounds like what I've heard before from Tom. That lower pitch though, that's fresh. He had a higher and a uh, mid-level inflection on Silence of the World, so this is different. Not bad! There's that string background, I love that. Adds on such a nice dimension, and now... It's really getting that cinematic feel. <sighs> the character of this world, again, it just has so much. The strings, the subtle heart plugins. And then these declines, man, I love it. <laughs> this definitely plays around in feeling, but again, it it, 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 it it takes in the energy of original work and just provides this fresh perspective on it. In every way. Really good combination, and that transition out with the riffs, which was a beautiful experience to humor. And now we've got the harp. And the return. Oh, in every way, back to the original key. I wondered if that key change would be long lasting. It's fine either way for me, at least in opinion. I wonder if there'd be an overlap. You know, it's funny on lower pitch. I almost can't tell when there's a vocal connect. Who's singing? 
because Melissa can almost match Tom at least to a degree. The world is gray, the mountains old, the forge is fire. That's a beautiful transformation. It's much harder than um, may it be. I mean, may it be had its harder points, but it still retained that softness of the original number, just again with that, that metal flare. I, I love works, again, in the cover space, there could be quite an, a number of variations. Many of you, I'm sure, could speak to that in your own familiarized works of what you've entertained. Maybe some of your favorites, I don't know. There are different choices artists make, you know, between one another in terms of the direction they want to go with their pieces. And this one, takes the original inspiration on behalf of The Hobbit, <laughs> changes the key, from what I remember, and again, it's been a little while since I've seen The Hobbit. The Lord of the Rings is um, much more closer to me, I think, in terms of what I've um, entertained recently. But The Hobbit, too, I liked those movies. I don't know everybody did, especially the last one. Um, I, I liked the general atmosphere, and I feel that with what Peter Jackson captured there in terms of imagining the books on screen, to the extent of a depiction as the Lord of the Rings qualified, this takes that scale of the original inspired work and gives it this nice rough metal foundation that still feels just as faithful. It's really interesting. But on vocal presence, you know, it's funny when you get to know an artist from one work and then they suddenly offer so much more. Right, and this has been the case of certain vocalists when I've you know happened upon a couple first introductions where suddenly you see the, maybe you see the, them in the presence of a collaboration. Let's say for example, very recently, uh, Amber of Uverhees of if I'm pronouncing the name right, and I apologize if I'm not. Feel free again to clarify down below um, from um, uh, Zandria. Right, I recently entertained her in terms of her collaborative work with Mortinia through the COVID aftermath sessions on behalf of the Hourglass, and that was an exquisite song. Highly recommended if you're not engaged a bit. And that was my first point of entrance, right? And I said, you know, of her, I'll give a bit of at least a summed up background. She's a Greek French artist, and her accent certainly speaks to this exquisite etherealness and beauty when you listen to her. But then you get to Zandria, and suddenly she not only does the more melodic, you know, clean vocals, she also can produce a beautiful scream, followed by an operatic pitch. And even in there, there's variations on the pitch and the range of where that, uh, the voice can go. This, that way, it, maybe, it, it's not as extensive here, but it's funny how it's such a reminder to me again, like I said, you, you recognize an artist on behalf of one work, but then they subvert you you know, in terms of what you're feeling going into a, a work because of that original encounter. With Tom, I think back to Demon Hunter. I think back to Silence the World. And again, it was specifically two ranges with that song. And I said he was a great vocalist there, right? Uh, well, that's actually, yeah, I'd, I'd say mid to high to high, higher. Um, it was much more limited. This... It's so weird to listen in part of the lower pitches because it almost sounds different, number one. The accent's so distinctive. I loved hearing it. But then when Melissa layers in her voice, especially towards the end, it's almost like I can't tell who's singing because she can also get to a lower pitch. I've heard this you know, in the past. It's just so weird to me. That one moment, it was like, okay. <laughs> It's a very faithful mix, and it worked. I think the vocal integration on behalf of uh, the duet presence certainly fits. I mean, Melissa can do so much. Many of you, of course, can speak to that. But it's a really neat adaptation. And everything about it works in character. The strings emphasis, I love the use of the harp on that. It's so subtle. And then they have, they have a you know, constrained section for it to be more showcased. Um, but... Plugging it in specifically, I believe, if I remember this right, in context to the riffs, or at least the symphonic side, just letting it be isolated, wonderful idea. Again, it's that unexpected flair that I appreciate with not just music generally, but European work. And there's so much talent in that realm of the world, many of you know I can't stop raving about it. With good reason. I do hope in part that my content can inspire new listeners. I try to pave roots. 
because I know there are probably many of you, especially if you're somebody in my personal circle, I know none of you know the name Dark Side of the Moon, no matter how hard or really any of the groups I mention. And I do try. <laughs> I do try. <laughs> to inspire new listeners. And, you know, with all of you who've entertained, you know, I, I've had the pleasure of hearing that for some of you that has been the case. But again, I looked at my personal relationships and it's just not reciprocated. So I appreciate how faithful all of you are in fostering this exquisite uh, enrichment, right, of an encounter on music works. As I said, for me, it's just not the same when I entertain works by myself, which is why I did consider immediately, you know, on thinking about it again, the dark side of the moon just deserves to have them spotlighted generally. On behalf of what we've heard thus far, six singles, we gotta hear more. It's a pleasure to entertain them again. Misty Mountains is a wonderful embodiment as to why in terms of character. And adaptation again within the cover space, it is a variation. Uh, with key, with emphasis, with vocal presence as well. Well, but it, it carries... It carries the, to the tone of the original work. It reimagines that cinematic memory for me on watching The Hobbit a number of times and hearing the Misty Mountains. It just re it, it reformats it in my mind to something much more individualized. Distinctive, of course, on, on formula towards the... Formula, that sounds bad. <laughs> Foundations, that's a better word. Towards the dark side of the moon. It's so unique, though, to hear how the, the original essence is preserved. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below on the piece if you wish to disclose your perspective. Um, and whatever angle of approach you take. Longtime fan, first exposure, I'd love to hear it. If you wish, again, to supply that. As I said, I think it's a wonderful recapturing of that original magic with The Hobbit. Very different distinctive. And it's wonderful as well to have an extension of knowledge on behalf of Tom's vocal talents. Again, one day I'll probably get to Evergrey and uh, Arion in greater depth. I'm very impressed with that piece. It's mostly the structure, the envisionment on how certain elements fit in, how it specifies its own presence according to the Dark Side of the Moon attribution, but maintains embodying the work that inspired it. That's what you want a cover to do, right? To be faithful. And maybe experiment around, try new things. Misty Mountains is a great example of success in that regard. Thank you so much for watching this video. Before you bounce, feel free to drop a like and comment, subscribe to this channel with a ding on the bell, and share this video with your friends. And consider checking out the description here. There you'll find links to my other channels, as well as addresses to my other social media accounts and ways you can help support my work if you feel so inclined. May God bless you, and looking forward to when our paths cross again.